a hand to our praise and worship team. Y'all have to forgive me. I have little challenges with my voice. Can you hear me in the back? Let me see it. Let me see you. Wave your hands in the back like you really don't care. There you go. All right. How about the front? Yeah. Yeah, thank you. God bless you. Um, so I was going to forget about you down the middle, huh? Come on now. If you can hear me in the middle, make some noise. Yeah. Look at this. Look at the abundance. Look at the abundance. Look at it. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you, Rich. All right. So anyhow, um, I want to thank God for another opportunity to be here. This is the 15th day of the year, 2017. Yes, somebody need to give God a, uh, a praise. You know, everybody didn't make it today. For those of you that uh, from down south, those of you that come from the Baptists community, one of our giants went home today to be with the Lord. We know that Bishop Eddie Long had left today. He's gone on to glory. And I just want you all to know that there's an appointed time for each one of us that we're going to have to go. Let's get that clear. I've already made my mind up that I don't even want to fight you, Lord. When the time comes, I'm, I'm done. But it's no longer an issue about where I'm going to be, you see. It's now about what can I do now so that I can prepare myself for when that time comes. As our praise and worship team had sang one of the songs that, the matter of fact, the last one. And that is that God, he sent his only son into the world. All right? Understand that he loved us so much that he sent heaven to earth in order to show us the way. Amen. Uh, you don't hear me. Amen. Because when Jesus came, he said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man. I'm going to say it again. Come a little closer. No man or no woman, no thing can come before the Father except through me. That is Christ Jesus. Just in case you don't know, I stand here. I stand here as a man chosen by God to speak on his behalf. And when I come here, I'm not here to entertain you. I'm not here because I want you to like me. I just want you to know I'm here to relay a message. The greatest message that you could ever hear is that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. What do you really think this salvation is all about? Excuse me if I get a little crude today. All right, it's all right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh, by the way, for those of you, I, I grew up in a time when a great man, his name is Martin Luther King Jr. Hallelujah. Martin Luther King Jr. 
in one of his most powerful messages spoken. He said these words. He said it, it doesn't mind anymore. Amen. Because my eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. Why? 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 It doesn't even make sense. Because there's so many options. There's so many options. And I'm speaking about me today, okay? I have so many options. And yet, why would I come here? Of all places in Skid Row. Why? Because I too can say that I've seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. These tears, these tears are not tears of sorrow. These tears are tears of joy. Because God has made it very clear to me That as I stand here, and as I share his word to you, I offer you life. And life more abundantly. So really deep down inside, there's a joy. There's a joy. Okay? And that joy is because God has come to deliver you. God has come to save you. God has come to heal you. I see different faces here today that I haven't seen before. I just spent three days, three days in prayer. 72 hours in prayer I spent before God. And I said, God, nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. Let me just do your perfect will. I see beautiful faces in front of me right now. I see beautiful faces. I see people in all situations, all experiences. I see your pain. I see your sorrow. I join with your laughter. I share with your strength. But when it's all said and done, it all comes down to one thing. And that is, what about the King? What about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? That's the bottom line. I'm not the only pastor that comes here. We have a number of different pastors that come here. And we all share the same thing alike. In that we are all under orders to fulfill that commission that God has given to us. And I want you all to understand something here. This is about eternity. I'm not going to pick on anybody personally. But if I happen to single you out, it's not because I'm trying to single you out. It's only because the Spirit of the Lord who is in me wants to just let you know that you are special. Okay? Amen. And so I want you to know that he would come down here to Skid Row because he couldn't get you anywhere else. You see? And he will let you know, oh, I've been looking for you. And I just want you to know that I love you and that I care for you. And I'd like to know, are you willing to accept my plan and my purpose for your life? Once again, Jesus said these words, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I'm going to say it again. The thief
He has no hidden agenda, by the way. He's very clear about it. He's very clear. And that is, he only wants to steal, kill, and destroy you. But Jesus said, but I've come that you might have life, and life more abundantly. Is that my message for today? No, it's not my message. But guess what? That's God's message. Today's message. Do you have your Bibles? Let me see your Bibles. The Bible is called the sword of the spirit. Why? Because it is the word of God. That Bible happens to be your most powerful weapon you can ever own in life. Life and death comes from that word right there. And when you transfer it into yourself and you speak it now, watch this. The Bible says, life and death is in the power of my tongue. So turn with me to Hebrews 11, verse 6. And just in case you thought I missed and that I forgot about you, I didn't forget about you. Because when you walked into this parking lot, you should have received a bulletin in your hand. Let me see your bulletins. Ah, uh, yeah, I love it. See, now, now, now I'm not crying no more. I'm happy now. You know why? Because you have a weapon in your hand. You have a weapon in your hand, and we call it... The switchblade. The switchblade. The reason why we call it switchblade is because right in the front page, it has the message today. Today's message is in that front page. And that too is the word of God. And it will cut both ways as well. Now I'm gonna be bold, okay? If you, if you, if you don't know by now, I'm gonna be bold whether you like it or not. Am I right? Come on, give it to me now. <laughs> see, what I really would like to see happen today is that that same switchblade that is in your hand Hopefully. will cut your heart. Yes. You see? Because see, <laughs> wow, I'm loving it already. <laughs> Because see, it's, it's, it, we're talking about a heart condition. Come on, Pastor. The majority of us that are in this parking lot, notice what I said. I did not say the majority of you. I said the majority of us. Me included. Stop worshiping pastors. Stop it. I'm serious about this. Keep us accountable too. Very important. It's very important that don't just be a, 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 a hearer of the word, but you got to become a doer of the word. I can't stand here and just get you all excited, giving you some false tears, and think that, oh, that's how it works. It does not work like that. You got to take time and spend time with God. You got to spend time in that word. If you go to Joshua 1 verse 8, what does it say? With my Bible scholars. With my Bible scholars. Come on, y'all. Help me out. Joshua 1 8. What does it say? This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. But you shall meditate in it day and night. For then you shall have success. But then you shall prosper, and then you shall have good success. Are we talking about, uh, <laughs> we're talking about the sword. You see what I'm saying? We're talking about the sword. 
If you live your life, this is the 15th day of the year. So that means if you live for the next 340 days doing that, oh, trust me, we're talking about prospering. We're talking about good success. I just gave you the formula for success, didn't I? How many caught it? Thank you, Jesus. But the, the truth of the matter is, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This is the first time ever that I've done this. I'm just gonna let the Holy Spirit move. Never mind format. We keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. Come on, people, talk to me now. All right, man. Can I come a little closer? Amen. I don't know. I don't know how close this is going to allow me to get. But come on, man. If I could live this life for you, I would. But I can't. Right. Amen. I've had to go through the same thing that you guys are going through right now. I've sat in these same seats. I wasn't always preaching, man. I lived in that building right there. I lived here homeless. But one day I said, it hurts. I told God it hurts. Are you all hear what I'm saying? It hurts to disobey God. It really hurts. And I got tired. I got tired of disobeying God. And I finally realized, you know something? I'm ready to do it your way. I'm ready to do it your way. And that's when everything changed in my life. That's when life became meaningful. That's when all of a sudden, all the things that were broken in my life began to become repair, repaired. They become mended, okay? Anybody ever get a fracture? Anyone ever break a bone? What, what does it take for it to heal? Time. It takes time, doesn't time. it? Not only does it take time, it also takes setting. Sometimes you gotta set that bone back in place and you gotta make sure nothing, oh, you don't hear what I just said. Make sure that nothing comes in contact with it. Ah, oh, Lord Jesus, what we're we talking about today. Amen. God's been talking to some of you and telling yourself to separate yourself. Okay? Separate yourself so that I can mend you. You came down here to Skid Row and you decided that, oh shoot, there's a party down here. You must have lost your mind to consider there's a party down here. into the world to condemn the world. So let's get this straight. I'm not standing here to condemn you. He said, but that the world through him might be saved. In other words, God wants to save you. God wants to rescue you. God wants to redeem you. Like I said, this is day number 15, 2017. Let's, let's, let's save ourselves some, from, from some extra pain. Let's get this thing straight now. Instead of coming into this parking lot because you know that at the end you're going to get yourself a meal. Sooner or later it's got to kick in. Sooner or later reality has got to tell you that you know something? I've been getting these meals for how many years now? I need something else. 
Because his word says, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. So what's my assignment? My assignment, in a nutshell, is this. My assignment is the same assignment that Martin Luther King had. And that is to free the slaves. Oh, I know y'all really don't like me now. He called me a slave. You're either a slave to sin. Come on now. Yeah, come on. You go. Or you're a slave for God. Come on. So now my question is this. And I look at each one of you. Each one of you are going to have to stand before God. I want y'all to know that. Each one of you. And he's going to ask you, well, what about, what about Pastor George? I, I sent him over to you on the 15th day of January, 2017. He poured his heart out before you, and he told you about me. What did you do? Did you accept his offer? Or did you reject it? So the bottom line is this. The bottom line is this. We are talking about faith, by the way. We are talking about the time to do the impossible. Yeah, we are talking about that. Okay? And the bottom line is this. We've been just so comfortable. The system that we've been caught up in. There's a, there's a level of, of comfortableness in that. Egypt, they complained after they were delivered from bondage. Because you know why? Because even though they were in slavery, everything that they needed Provided was provided for them. Right. Is this a skin roll message? Come on. I got news for you. This is a universal message. This is for every person that has ever been born on this earth. It's understanding that the reason why you are alive today is because God determined God determined that you would be created in his image and according to his likeness the, the, the Bible says he breathed into man and man became a living soul a living person a living being and by the way in that same time of creation, he also gave Adam, which is the, the first man, he gave him dominion. Do you know what dominion means? Do you know what dominion is? He gave him power. He gave him authority. To excel in order to live. But because of man's willful disobedience, he lost that ability. And this is where we are to this day. Many people here, I know you really, 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 really are trying. You're like, you know, Pastor, I hear what you're saying, but this is, this is not easy. Do you know what I've been going through? But that's, uh, once again, the word. The sword, the sword comes and says to you, come unto me, all you that labor, and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Because my yoke is easy and my burden is light. In other words, what God is saying today in a nutshell is this. Are you ready to make an exchange? Can we make it, can we make it a 
exchange today? Amen. Amen. Anybody ever been in debt? Anybody ever experienced? Thank you for your honesty. Have you ever, you know, in the midst of your debt, all of a sudden, the company or the, the person decides that we're going to cancel your debt? Huh. Yeah. Have, have you ever experienced that? Raise your hand. That's an awesome feeling, isn't it? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And that's what Jesus did for us. Amen. Jesus said, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And all he's saying is, give me your unrighteousness for my righteousness. Amen. Amen. Give me all your guilt. Give me all your shame. Give me all your weaknesses. And take my strength. Take my joy. Take my love. This is what he wants. You don't get no better than that. I told you eight years ago, eight years ago, I sat in these seats. Okay? Now, the truth of the matter is, is that guess what? While I'm sitting in these seats, I'm a Christian man. I love the Lord. So what does that mean? It means that Christians are not exempt. Right. So look, don't get it twisted now. Don't think that I'm here talking about sinners. Because the Bible said, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And I'm saying all that because I want you to know that God wants to even the playing field. Okay? In God's eye, in his eyes, all have sinned. Ah, oh, you don't hear me now. You don't hear me now. So it doesn't matter how small or how large or how wide or how deep or how far that sin has been in your life. Doesn't matter how recent it has been. It may have been just before you walked in that parking lot. It may be a couple of seconds ago. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, it happens that way too, you know. The thoughts. The thoughts, by the way. Okay? Or, guess what? It may be really major. It may be like something like, oh no, I don't want to, I pray to God nobody knows I did that. It doesn't matter. The fact of the matter is this. Are you ready and are you willing to make an exchange? God wants to take away your sins and he wants to give you his righteousness. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Now watch this. As a result of that transaction, as a result of that transaction, he not only promises, but he guarantees you eternal life. Throughout the rest of your life and throughout eternity. So, Pastor, would you consider that to be a situation that's, you don't understand my sins, that's, that's impossible. It's impossible for him to forgive me of all the sins that I've done. Well, God made it very clear. He already said. He said in Hebrews 11 verse 6, Without faith, it is impossible to please him. Who happens to be God, by the way. And he who comes must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So guess what? My time is up. And your time now begins. Amen. Amen. Amen.
My praise and worship team, you can come on up. With my warriors, come on up. 